Greetings, greetings, greetings in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, our soon coming Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Yes, once again, this is your friend, praise God and the Voices of Vision. I am Bishop Dr. Juliet Fagan, in case you're just joining in for the very first time. It's such a great honor and privilege and pleasure uh, to be coming into your homes, um, you know, at your workplaces, on Facebook, on YouTube, Twitter, uh, you know, wherever you are. I come with the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And I bring greetings also on behalf of Pastor Leroy and all of the brethren of Vision Miracle Church of God. Vision Miracle Church of God, praise God. We're located, praise God, in the Muirhead Shopping Complex out there in Dembe in Clarendon. That's right. We're also located in um, Lot 470's Entry, Greater Pope Moore. You're going to be hearing more about that as we go along. I'm just all excited. I just want to give God thanks. You know, He has brought us thus far. Praise the Lord. We are still here. You know, there are so many that had plans for today, had plans for, um, you know, next week. And, you know, they're not here. I mean, when we think about um, all of those innocent children, um, that were cut down at such a tender little age um, in Connecticut. Um, you know, those of us and those of you that have children and grandchildren, you need to embrace them, you need to love them, you need to protect and care for them and nurture them in the fear and admonition of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. We are living in perilous times. We are living in, in a day and age where, um, you know, the criminal elements are on the loose, demons and devils, if you will. There's only one devil, but you know, demonic forces, you know, it seems as if there's an increase, which the Bible speaks of these things, that we're living in a time now that is now what we would call a generation of vipers, you understand. So, you know, we were living in some serious times and knowing that it behooves the body of Christ, it behooves the church on a whole to... Um, get our acts together, you know, get serious about soul winning and kingdom building and, and all of those things that, as it pertains to the things in the word of God. Praise God. You know, I love the story. Um, you know, I love to talk about Solomon and I admire Solomon despite all of the negativity and all of the things with his concubines and all those things. You know, for some reason, you know, God still used him. God still, um, you know, had a plan for his life. You understand? And, um, you know, you know, have you ever thought about it? Um, Solomon was told to ask you know, ask for anything that he wanted. You know, he had the ability to ask for for anything. God said, you ask for anything that you want and, you know, you'll get it. And I don't know if it was a test from God or, or what it was, but, you know, um, just like um, just like us, any of us today, you know, we have an opportunity to um, decide um, whether we will serve the Lord or we will continue to live in a life of sin and, you know, reject um, the, 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 the calls and the warnings uh, about, um, you know, the impen impending wrath of God, that is. And so I, I admire Solomon. I'm be sure sharing a little story with you, you know, from a little book that I have here. So I'm going to be sharing something with you. And the reason why I feel like doing this now is because I know that it has impacted my life and um, it has inspired me. And so I just want to share it with you. Every child wants a fairy to grant their wishes. We all know that, you know, we all know little children, they have their little dreams. People in fairy tales always allow, you know, are always allowed to make at least one wish. You understand? Um, if not three. As we grow older though, we still tend to want our wishes to be granted. And that's it. You know, if you're sitting there, you're listening to me, um, you can probably agree with what I'm saying. You know, you always want God to bless you. You always want all the blessings of God, you know, all the wishes to be granted and your prayers to be granted. Um, because it's a part of life and it's a part of us. You understand? We, we want what we want to be granted when we want it and how we want it. You understand? 
But look at this. The reason for all of that is why so many people um, go and they gamble and they play lottery and they play, um, you know, try to, you, they want to get rich quick and, you know, their focus is on money and, you know, they, they want all the material things, you know, we're living in a microwave age, if you will, you know, people want a quick fix, you know, um, nobody, there. you've hard to find, people want to work honestly for things anymore, that's why we have all the robberies and, you know, the crime and violence and the murdering and the gas and the, you know everybody wants to be in control and everybody wants to rule and lead and you understand it's and guess what at the end of the day it's all about wealth and it's all about money and it's all about greed and 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 and, and that kind of thing you understand so people gamble and they kill and they steal and they do all of these things you understand what would we choose if we had just one wish what it is right now even in this year you know this new year um, you know what it is the one wish that you would like and you wish that could be granted in, 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 in your life. You understand what it is that you wish that that could be granted. That one wish that you wish that would come true for you. You understand. You understand? Think about it. Some people would say, well, I wish I could get a new house. Um, you know, I wish I could get a new car. You know, I wish that I could get a raise of pay. You know, I wish that uh, Mr. Wright would come along or I wish that the one that I'm with now would marry me. You know, I wish that I could get pregnant. And You know, there's all kind of people that out there that you know there are many of you out there that really as you listen to me now you know what it is that you would really wish for and you wish that you had and you wish that would come true for you you understand you know but, but sometimes the the very thing that we're wishing for the very thing that we're hoping for and desiring most sometimes you get it and after you got it then you don't want it and you wish that you never had it you understand praise God you know, some people want a dream holiday. Some people wish that they could be healed from that terrible sickness, from that sickness that they're, they're that they've they've been you know sick so long with, and all kinds of things people are wishing for. Wishing for, we would be very pleased to swap places with King Solomon. You understand, King David's son. You know, he was the son of David. Yes, Solomon. You know, when you think about his unexpectedly um, wishes being granted, you understand. He was told to ask for what. Whatever um, it is that he wants or anything you want, um, it is God, not a fairy, not not some little story that, that that appeared to Solomon in a dream. But this is God Himself appearing to Solomon and speaking to him, you know, and 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 and, and letting him know through a dream that anything that you want, I'm gonna give it to you. You understand? Solomon's answers show that his reputation for wisdom is justified in First Kings three two uh, to fifteen. You can read it you can read the story for yourself in first kings um first kings 3 rather verses 2 to 15 you can read about it in your spare time so i'm just here sharing with you because um maybe for too long you have been wishing for the wrong things you have been praying for the wrong things and maybe god wants to speak to you now maybe your priorities are wrong your motives are wrong and that's why nothing is working out for you the way that you want it to work out for you because you're you're, you're hoping and you're dreaming and you're wishing you know for the wrong things and maybe those things if you really get everything that you've been wishing for and praying for maybe you would find out that um that you you know it, it could be detrimental to you you know either if it's not physically spiritually you understand at a time there was no temple for worshiping the lord and everyone offered sacrifices at the local shrines Praise God. Solomon loved the Lord and followed his father David's instruction. But Solomon also offered sacrifices and burnt incense, uh, incenses at the shrine. So here we see that, you know, Solomon wasn't perfect. You know, it wasn't like Solomon was all that when it comes to his spirituality. You know, he wasn't all that. But listen, the most important shrine was in Gibeon. Yes, and Solomon had offered more than 1,000 sacrifices on that altar. Right. One night while Solomon was in Gibeon, the Lord God appeared to him in a dream and said, Solomon, ask for anything you want and I will give it to you. So it just shows us that God can appear to people. God, and he does appear to people. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a living example. I can remember, um, you know, waking up one morning on October the, uh, on October the 8th. That's right in um, 2011. Uh, 2012 that is and the voice of the Lord spoke to me um, like it was some human being and said I want you to go to Maypen today 
you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm heading to the, to the restroom and it's daylight and this voice is saying to me I want you to go to Maybank for what I don't know I just heard a voice saying go Maybank today and most naturally I got up and we headed towards Maybank I mean I, in my spirit I, I, I realized that it was had to do with ministry you understand I, I because my mind is always on ministry I've always been prophesying about a ministry in Maybank for years and you know I, I, I didn't go to my bed with Maybank Clarendon on my mind or a ministry on my mind I, I mean, there was nothing like that. But this voice spoke to me and said, go. And so I said to uh, my husband, I said to Pastor, I said to Leroy at the time, I said, we're going to Maypen this morning. Let's go. And, you know, he was shocked, you know, because we didn't talk about going to Maypen. But I know that I had heard the voice of the Lord speaking to me, telling me to go to Maypen, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but go Maypen like this morning, you know, in a few hours. And so most naturally, Leroy, he realized as well you know that this was God speaking to me and we went where we were going we didn't know but we drove and we drove and we drove and then all of a sudden you know the spirit of the Lord then spoke to Leroy and he stopped at this plaza and we began to um, he went into a particular store and there were many other stores but he went to this particular place and um, there was a lady and he began to talk with her to make a long story short and you know it so happened that this lady had recognized and um, you know her husband was in Cayman attended the same church that we attended to her, including her sister-in-law for many many years and it so happened that this lady knew us and even though it was so long memories began to come back and you know we told her I, I told her why I was there in Maypen and the Lord said go to Maypen and in my spirit I realized that okay he was ready he was ready to bless us with another ministry and you know here it was she was able to point us just up the road from where she was to um, Muirhead shopping complex and we drove and went there and sure enough there was waiting there a shop you know waiting for us you know where another church was and that church had recently moved and it seems as if that even though people went and look at the shop the, um, it, it, the lady did not release that shop because God had a plan for us to be in Maypen and so when I'm when I was reading about God speaking to Solomon in a dream you know I said okay you know this this I mean I was in mine wasn't in a dream but you know he spoke to me and, and you know he's spoke to me like it was audible I heard like something say go to me pen today and so I know that God is still speaking God is still speaking to people even in this generation and in these last days you know he might not come when we want him and how we want him but I'm telling you if your mind is stayed on God and in the things of God and you desire to walk in, 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 in the precepts and in the, in the steps of the Lord as they've been ordered and commanded by him, I'm quite sure when he is ready, he's going to speak to you. Sometimes, you know, he comes to you in a dream. Sometimes he will speak to you through a person. Sometimes he'll come to you, you know, in, 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 in um, a song. You know, God has a way of speaking to his people when he is ready. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so here we see that God spoke to Solomon. And you know, Solomon answered, uh, My father David, your servant, was honest and did what you commanded. You were always loyal to him and you gave him a son who is now king. So here it is for us as parents. It is good that we train up our children to know about the Lord. You know, here, here we can see where David could, could, you know, he was, you know, speaking back. You know um, to the Lord and you know um, now you know maybe he was there now speaking you know just speaking like you know many times we're praying and you know we're talking to God prayer is 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 communicating and communicating with God and so he was reminding God of of his father of what he did you know what his father did and how he um, you know blessed his, his father so you know sometimes even you know this taught me a lot and you know it, it just shows that sometimes you know we as parents as as believers and as Christians as pastors we 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 train up our children we live the life in front of them we do everything that we possibly can to direct them in the right path but for some reason you know they're they're they're, they're they they go off track and they're driven astray and um it seems as if that they'll they, they they'll never be saved 
good. And you know, this, this reminds me right here. You know, um, here it was. This reminds me that we, 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 we all we got to do is continue to, to live the life, um, you know, live a godly life and uh, make sure that um, what we're doing in the sight of our children is, um, is, is the right thing and that they can remember their parents. They can always look back and say, well, you know, I saw how my mother and my father lived and, uh, um, you know, they, 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 my mother, I never heard my mother um, curse a bad word or I never saw my father hit my mother. Or, you know, um, you know, I, I want I want a husband that's got to treat treat me as a woman like how my father treated uh, my mother. You know, I want a wife that could treat me like how my mother treated my father. You know, we, we got to be role models to our children. And, and like I say, even when they've gone astray and, and they have wandered off, you know, um, you know, let us not give up on them. Let us not, um, you know, stop praying for them. Let us not stop prophesying over them. I do believe that in this year, there's going to be a lot of children saved and or a lot of young people is going to come back to the Lord and those that have wandered off, I believe that God is going to speak to them. Um, you know, if, if, if he have to allow things to come their way to, to, to wake them up, um, he'll allow it to happen. But as parents, as guardians let us continue to pray for them let us continue to lift them up before god let us continue to call their names um, let us continue to believe that we see them saved and decree and declare that they are saved praise god they are not going to be saved but we let us this year start saying let us continue to say for those of us who've been doing it that my daughter is saved she don't know that she's saved but she's saved my son is saved my grandchild is saved because you know something you know when we begin to to speak it and we begin to believe it then something begins to create and happen for them so here we see that Solomon praise God began to talk to God and remind God about his father praise God he said you he said he said listen my father was a servant you know my father was a servant of yours praise God he said it's, it's such a good thing when your children can 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 say you know my mother was a servant of the Lord my father was a servant of the Lord all I ever knew them out uh, for my born that uh, for my born I grew and saw my father and mother I mean all they were concerned about is church planting and and winning sinners even when they were um, disrespected and even when they were turned against and ill treated by the very people that they preached and prayed um, for you know all we ever did was see our parents you know just 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 in the in the work of the Lord I mean what what a testimony for your children to have what a testimony and a story for your daughter Order for your grandchildren to to, to, to to grow up with knowing that when that, that when they when when they're talking they can say you know my granny always prayed for me she always laid her hand on my head my grandfather always prayed for me you know and and you know what what a loving thing for our children what a what an inheritance to leave for 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 our children what what inheritance what legacy are you leaving for your son for your for your daughter for your little girl for your grandchild what what it is that you're leaving you know what 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 have you embedded in their life and in, in, in their lives that they can go down in history with that is positive and and and, and good and excellent that that that, that is um, you know worthy for them to to talk about to write a book about to to sing a song about what it is that you have left for them I want you to think about this now praise God hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Praise the Lord. Yes, my friend. He said, you were always loyal to him. Watch this. Watch this. He said, you were always. Here it is. That, here it is now. Um, Solomon is talking to God. And he, 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 he's reminding God that, you know, you know, there were times that probably things was rough with my father. And, you know, things were, you know, it wasn't always going the way that, you know, that, that he wanted it to go. Or that, you know, but he said to God, he said, listen, watch this. Now. He said, you were always loyal to him. And you gave him a son who is now king lord god i am your servant wow you know here it is here it is solomon saying now he said listen i i am your servant i'm gonna follow the, the footsteps of my father we know that that everything wasn't all that good and all perfect with david also but i always like to remind people of what of, of that of what god said you know he's a, he's a man after my own heart praise god david was a worshiper you know yes david messed up yes david um you know murdered and 
and did all the blood was on his hand. All kind of things were happening to him and all kind of things he did. But you know, for some reason, you know, David was still uh, regarded and, and, and still mentioned um, in the books, praise God, you know. And he still had some good things about him that really pleased God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, my friend. Harry said, I am, and you say, I'm your servant, and you've made me king in my father's place. Praise God. But I'm very young, and I know so little about being a leader. Here it is that, that Solomon is reminding God, even though God, even though God knew, praise God. You know, here it is, Solomon is saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very young. You know, it, you know, it, it don't even have to be young in age only. He could, you know, I'm just paraphrasing now. Sometimes people are old in age, but they're young in this, in the faith, and they're young in the things of God, and and they're young in the Word of God. You know, they're they're new converts praise God so they they have a lot to learn they have to they have to to, to be re retrained and and, and and learn the new things and unlearn some things praise God and so he said you know you you have made me king in my father's place praise God but I'm very young and I, I don't know anything about leading praise God and now I must rule your chosen people even though there are too many of them to count praise God what a task Solomon was given after his father died you understand he would become king you understand now and he had all these people to be in charge of and to rule and to lead you understand I can imagine Solomon you know going to his bed you know I can remember I can I can remember when I was thrust and I say thrust into the ministry you know um at that time in 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 in, in, in late um in the, in the early 90s praise god you know i was thrust into the ministry i had no idea about pastoring i had no idea about administration i had no idea i didn't even understand you know about um you know being the leader of of people and and pastor in a church um and i saw i, I remember this and i i say i'm going to do what solomon did i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to follow the footsteps of solomon and i'm i'm i'm, I'm not going to ask God to, to 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 give me no big titles or or no um, accolade or or no um, you know no degrees and doctorates or nothing like that. I got asked God to give me wisdom. I need Him to teach me. I had nobody to teach me. I was left at a um, little, little. I was left with a little congregation by someone else um, who was um, migrating to the states, and um, I was just thrust into it. And so I just said, okay, I'm, I'm just going to ask God to, to lead me and to guide me in, in, in how to carry on this work. Because I honestly, I really don't know what to do. Do you know that um, some of the greatest leaders and that I've seen out there, and I know that many of you listening to me, some of the greatest leaders that we have in this generation and even before this generation, praise God, are, are not great men and women who um, graduated from colleges with um no with all kind of degrees in theology and and um you know hermeneutics and and all the things and all the hebrew and the greek and all that you know some of the greatest leaders and preachers of our um you know has been men and women who didn't know what to do who had no idea about pastoring had no idea about um how they would do it you know they had to seek the face of god they had to go down in sackcloth and ashes and pray and fast and say god if you don't tell me what do i i, I just don't know what to do and you know in, in plenty of us we have messed up and made some mistakes and you know and done some things and said some things that that, that that had nothing to do with God and had nothing to do with the church and you know why because we were ignorant we were we were we were young and you know while we're seeking God on one side we still try to operate in the flesh on another side and I, I'm telling you you know I'm still I, I am still here I'm trusting God and seeking his face for for divine direction and and then lead and praise God hallelujah oh I'm, I'm so excited praise God and I pray and trust that I'm being a blessing to you as I share in this fashion praise God hallelujah you understand here's what Solomon said please make me wise and teach me the difference between right and wrong you understand I'm notice I'm paraph paraphrasing what, what, what you would have read in first Kings 3 2 to 15 I'm just bringing it to you on layman terms praise God so Solomon said please make me wise and teach me the difference between right and wrong praise the Lord then I will know how to rule your people praise the Lord 
bought uh, something. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for riches. If you don't watch this, if you don't, there is no way I could rule this great nation of yours. So it is even, um, you know, even in our in our even in our churches now. So it is. We 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 still we still got to seek God's face for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You know, we got to rely on Him. We got to depend upon Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Here's what God said to Solomon. Here's what God said to Solomon. God said, Solomon, I'm pleased that you asked for this. You could you you could have asked to live a long life or to be rich. You understand? Or you could have asked for many for your enemies to be destroyed. Wow. You know how many times have people not prayed for their enemies, you know, to be destroyed. Lord, kill them. You know, Lord, um, wipe them off, you know, the face of the earth. You know, right now there are, there are persons right now. And I am sad to say, you got even some persons who are professing to be Christians. Who have bad thoughts about their enemies and about people that have wronged them. And people that have done them, you know, hurtful things. Let me tell you something. If you're talking about being hurt, being betrayed and, and, and lied to and, and you know everything, well you're talking to, 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 to her right here. You're talking to one of them right here. I mean, I've been so wounded by, by, by fellow servants of the Lord and, and, and Christians and everything. And you know, in the beginning of that of that wound and of that hurt you know you 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 tend to want to take things into your own hands you know and i know that if you're sitting there and you're saying acting as if that you don't know what i'm talking about you're a hypocrite because you know it happens to the best of us you know when when you're hurting or when you're wounded i'm telling you it seems as if that you know, it seems as if all consciousness seems to want to leave. And you know, you just tend to want to take things into your own hands. But it comes a time when you shake yourself and you say, you know, vengeance belongs to the Lord. You understand that he's going to repay, pay this coming. So guess what? He's the, he's the, he's the master, you know, so he's the one that is in charge. So I'm going to leave it in the hands of God and I'm going to do what the word of God says. I'm going to relay with a sincere heart. Pray for my enemies, you know, pray for them, pray for all them who have, have done me wrong and betrayed me and hurt me and said all manner of evil about me. I'm going to pray for them that God would help them and that he would forgive them and that they would see um, themselves and, and really get back to that place, um, you know, where they are falling from and, if, you, you know, just, just leave it in the hands of God, you know, just recently. Um, you know, someone um, did us very, something very bad, um, you know, just um, last year, you know, we were wounded and I was, tra I was, I was affected traumatically and, you know, it was such a blow to us in our ministry and, and, you know, finances and everything. And, you know, it got to a place where, um, you know, we could go to that individual and um, just say to that individual without even, um, you know, bringing up the past or the wrong that was done to us. We could just go and say, listen, we want you to know that, um, you know, all that you have done, we forgive you. We forgive you and um, we want you to know that um, we forgive you. And so um, just know that we, we, we have forgiven you. And so we, we, we pray the best and wish you the best, you and your family and your endeavors and, and all that pertains to you. And, you know, when you do that, when you when you um, let go and, 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 and do stuff like that, you know, then it only opens a door for um, the anointing um, to flow upon you and out through you to another level and, and blessings to come your way and, you know, things begin to happen for you that would have been blocked and stopped because of the spirit and the heart of unforgiveness. So, um, you know, I, I just pray and trust that you have been wonderfully blessed by um, these few words of encouragement because, you know, maybe someone is sitting there and you're saying, you know, you're praying um, for, you know, that something could happen to someone who has wronged you last year or um the year before, a couple of years ago, this is a new year. Um, you know, it's a new season. God wants to do something new for you and through you. So whatever it takes for you to get your blessing, whatever it takes for you to get what is rightfully yours and what belongs to you, whatever it takes for you to continue to to, to, to walk in the path and, and, and in the steps that has been ordered by God um, for you, you got to do it. You know, sometimes it might seem as if that pride would want to 
uh, um, come in and say, you know, that if you do it, you look weak and, and you're not going to sense and they can have it over you because you go back and, and it wasn't you that um, wronged them. But we are reminded that the word of God lets us know that if you know that your brother or sister or someone have ought, have something against you, not you against them, but you know that you that they have something against you, you know, put down your gift, you know, and if you have some ought against them, you put down your gift and you go and make it right and then you come back and then you offer up your sacrifice to God. And a lot of people are losing out. They're losing because they're praying for the wrong things. They're praying for all the riches. They're praying for, praying for wealth. They're praying for um, something to happen to people and they're praying, you know, for all kinds of doors to open and they're praying, you know, for all these things to happen and it will never happen because, you know, you got to get out on you. Go, you got to make sure that your heart has been cleansed and that you have, have forgiven and you have let go and you're free, you know, and, and you're ready for what God has in store for you. Praise the Lord. I pray and trust, praise God, that you have been wonderfully blessed by these few words of encouragement, praise God. And I know that you have been blessed. Let us hear from you. Let this station hear from you. And we're looking forward to being back with you. Same times, same place. God bless you. Go to the church of your choice this week. Shalom.